maybe instead of going for kills here, we actually could have rotated a little more to the west. We could have found ourselves a nice position. So that's also going to be difficult for a lot of these teams to kind of look back on or even adapt in the moment. But we are heading into the game, as you said, a very southern plane path. I like South Mirror Park. It's, again, I say very I think, regularly. I think it's I, one I, of the I, more fun areas. I joke about Trailer Park and Oasis and all that other stuff, but this is one of my favorite areas, if not my favorite area of Miramar, is along the pathing of this plane. We've been getting a lot of them down here, and uh, the amount of times that we keep, I guess, plane path toying with the Valdemar area gets me more and more nervous each time. You guys got, uh, I think, a little corner of Higos in yesterday. You and Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was actually the first game of yesterday. But I actually love Oasis. Oh, uh, fighting in Oasis is super fun. Even before they, they reworked that area, remember that old wall with all the little ridges and stuff up there? It was always kind of fun to fight up there. Now Oasis is actually a joy. Uh, we haven't seen too many games there. But now looking at the teams coming out, um, it does look like, again, everyone should be mostly sticking to the south, especially if the circle does end up coming down here once more as stretching in Miramar, especially if you're trying to go really far north, can be problematic because by the time you land, other teams are already rotating. We did also see a pretty southern plane path like you were talking about yesterday. Not a lot of teams really wanting to go down to the south. This is kind of a bond review situation. QM phase realizing, okay, playing a long plane path whenever we see this, a lot of our teams are leaning much more to the north off of it. No surprise, there's more territory to be had That's there why. as the circle pops. And they're going to get rewarded for that. I mean, they're going to be able to get their loot into a decent situation. They're going to have backs up against the coast. And phase T5, QM, Falcons all already in a very good start to this game. Yeah, and we did kind of dance around in one of the circles. Yes, I think it was the second game. Uh, Los Leones maybe being one of those endings as, you know, it, it's... Los Leones as a city ending is very claustrophobic because unlike other cities, well, first of all, it's massive. Los yeah. Leones is one of the biggest cities in PUBG. And so you can field so many different teams, especially when you have solos and duos in the equation, and it becomes very claustrophobic. So probably my least favorite city ending to play in. Uh, I don't even, I don't want to say I don't like watching it because of just how, how frustrating it can be um, for the players, but it does tend to cause a lot of problems, especially when you see multiple teams sending it in there early. Uh, I always want to say, yeah, I don't like Los Leones endings to some degree, but then I remember that game where we had essentially a Tachi on top of the telephone pole firing down Roth, into the smokes. Yeah. That was such a <laughs> nice good reference. game. Uh, I, I just love that one. And so I, I like Los Leones, but I think I about that one too. It's very very, very hard to navigate just due to how vertical there's so many open angles. That's another thing, yeah. The, the construction buildings yep. make it so, so difficult. And given the fact that we've had Los Leones be such a core component of so many of these games, it, it's made it much more difficult. I mean, we, made, we actually saw team fights quite early inside of Los Leones in our last game. Right. And so, yeah, we'll see if we go there. This one does like to shift to the east or south. It's, it's actually been a while since we've ended in Leones proper. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see where we go. However, we're going to go right now to an interview with Uba. Still two days ahead, so it's not even yet. I think like we'll try to fix our small mistakes and just move on and play even better. So, I'm pretty sure that kind of just means they like didn't have a good start of the tournament. I think every every team from Los Dragons who came in, they were like pretty good. So yeah, everyone has a chance. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for cheering. Like for good messages. Thank you. We love you. We got a smile. That's a, oh, we got an I love you and a smile. That's like very rare. For uh, <laughs> I feel blessed right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was it was a great deal. Like outside of the game is actually it's, it's really very chill, dude. Very dangerous. Yeah. Oh, what happened here, though? Uh, trees, expendables things. Hey, look, it's not the expendables losing a player early, though. So I guess some level of vengeance back is I always love that. Just dropping the trail back behind it's you. It's actually so irritating. Though, if you're the person <laughs> living, you're just like, oh. Why have you done this? But yeah, I mean, that's what you get, I guess, for killing them early. So again, Delwyn, the one getting that kill, he's been very impressive for me this event, just really stepping up. Whenever the Expendables really need him to, he's there. And I want to talk about this now that we've got the leaderboard up and kind of the opportunities for some of the teams that we were talking about in the lower bracket. I mean, even if you look down to T, 39 points, a, a good solid game, several kills inside of it, and what? Uh, up the leaderboard, 20 Shoot, points, like up five, into six sixth. positions, yeah. Yeah, up into six is only 20 points away. So it's not like anybody is just running away with their position just quite yet. We haven't had the point sponges be a factor, and so don't count out anyone just quite yet. Now, winning it from, I don't know, 16th is going to be a lot more complicated, but definitely ending in 16th is not to be expected. The most important thing is the possibility is there. The possibility yeah. is very much there for a team in 16th now, as long as they start to step it 
it up and get the consistent points to be able to find that win. But all of a sudden, Uba knocked first. Example with the trade, and here we go. This is a very early fight, Matt. <laughs> Just a couple of bad blood between this one is now, I think 777 is pretty much done in this position. He should be able to get taken out. But 17 Gaming going to go ahead and say, hey, we yeah. want a piece of what's going to be going on over here. We want some more points. Just a couple more points going to allow them to catch up to what's going on with T5. And imagine going into this tournament saying that 17 Gaming needs to catch up to T5. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I would have thought, but they're actually going to be able to scoop 777 up. And so a recovery here, a reset, if you will, on both sides as Uba has also been brought to his feet and they're gonna drive seven yeah they're like yeah. you know what you have they're it take it <laughs> we're done <laughs> we are so done with these early game fights meanwhile we've got ourselves some fun it's gonna be scrapping up over here falcons just gonna be the north of this firefight but it's gonna be curexi trying to hold it together the rest of the squad's gonna be coming in danawa just gonna go ahead and get salute out of this position uh, and yeah this is the way you're gonna want to retreat assume that those hillsides are already taken regroup and this is just the beginnings of los leones right i like this split actually from phase they have three members here on the south overwatching curexi and if he really needs to all he has to do is just go up to the rooftop and he should get a decent amount of cover from his team so they will at least hold that linchpin of a five story which is pretty much dead center in the circle but look at silzen's position Ooh, barely getting by that one Scappy isn't gonna be able to hit Isaki anybody on that one Isaki gonna get some shots and uh, actually might knock Scappy here and he's gonna be able to rotate is this is just kind of what's going on over there on the eastern part outside of Impala yeah, of all areas, this is very far on the northwest or northeast side of the circle as they're going to be rotating there on that coast towards Puerto Pariso. I, I did want to cut in real fast. Silzen's sure. positioning on just north of Danawa is kind of intriguing because, yeah, he's going to be able to pick up something out of this. The rest of his squad is kind of more to the southeast, playing in between Phase and T5. Yeah, and he has a lot of room to work with here. As, again, we talked about Los Leones is it's... It's actually very good for a solo if you need to hide or maybe create some chaos. There's so many different buildings you can hop in. Even those buildings have multiple levels. There's a lot of angles to worry about. So Silzen getting that kill and getting out is actually great for them. This is uh, more of the, the peculiarities with, uh, we can see, trying to regroup over here. Uh, Forest Master now has Cerberus in between him. So uh, he gets to, I guess, wrap around the entirety of the circle or come back the other direction for Puerto. I don't know exactly where he's being sent off to right now. Scappy and Olympus going to be south of Cerberus. Is that is probably the safest bet for now. I guess he's just going to be playing Anchor or... I wonder if he's looking... What is he looking for? Maybe he's looking for a boat to go very or far away. Yeah. Pick up? One Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see is if you mind. Game of PT now in a fight early with 4AM, a team that desperately needs to collect points here as two members will fall for GPT, but one will be traded out in Jalu. Nobody wanting to make the commitment into Los Leones, getting into firefights on the outside of it. Baku gonna be in some trouble, as it's gonna be Jalpion looking down onto the Zilla sign. Try to reposition, Lou is up on that ramp, but I think that it's really just to make sure that they secure his positioning, keep him alive and safe, as Hush is off in the distance, getting harassed. And I don't know, I, I don't know what he can even do from here anymore, as this is just, this isn't gonna be a home you can stay at, just get the smokes out and get out. Yeah, he needs to get out of here, but look at this HSMM now trying to find the angle and he's trying to cut off hush from getting out of here mm -hmm. three points the way of 4 a.m is a great start for them as they've really been struggling here in grand final so far as they also have a position where they're in the north and they have quite a bit of room to start working with if i'll see how long they're actually going to chase sorry hush and master just passing each other ships in the night being like hey, hey what's going on you just keep oh you got cut way. off from your team too hey oh well, yeah okay uh we can see jinji now coming into this Look phase at line he's right in the center of phase <laughs> this is just po being max po right now he's dialed it up to 11. does effects has no idea gustav is like what the absolute shot just happened Fex gonna crest up goes for spray Po Ooh. gets another one phase in some trouble and that's two members now down for phases. They were in this really wide split, and that completely cuts off Corexi and Jeems from each other. So a very risky but beautiful play coming out of Genji and Pio. I'm not in between you. You're in between me kind <laughs> yes. of situation. Suddenly FaZe had Pio surrounded, and now it's going to be FaZe separated out, and Corexi just kind of is stuck in an awkward spot between Genji and Danawa. And how do you expect that coming out from Genji, right? They would kind of looked at the south, maybe looking for a team. They probably saw Genji all the way in the south, and they're like, okay, this is fine. We'll just have to hold them off. But Pio was already on the side of their hill, ready to push up, and especially when damage came out, I think it was on Fex, uh, if I saw correctly, or the other member that got knocked, they just, they had no clue. 
the longer this goes, it's just starting to feel more and more loosely on as the players kind of committing into a similar idea. Hard shifts have been abounding everywhere, though. We are going to keep most of Leonis in play. Really, just our Eastern team's going to have to make a move. And yet again, those wide open spaces to the west of Los Leonis, a key component. But for the teams that start to realize, Matt, that the west is open, they have so many different areas or points of control that they can start to move into and, and really start to dictate and make a big impact on the rotations uh -oh. coming in as... Look at how many teams are now starting to come back to the East, Matt. Yeah, we got Falcons getting into a dust up right now with TE, and that's going to be TE losing yet another one. Capitan going to hop back inside of the vehicles, and this is the Falcons' home territory. TE going to be cutting path in. Navi also kind of approaching over here. We do have 17 Gaming that's getting control of the North. Sonic's also on the West, making a bit more of a bisected path through, I guess, the, the outskirts of Los Leones itself. Danawa also getting out of that position. Genji, everybody moving more centered yet again, even though Los Leonis is kind of hanging around the center. Just what, two, three hundred more meters? Get to that center spot, yep. play it. I'm actually really surprised as well. No one's playing that eastern hill just to where uh, the the east of where Navi is playing because you have so much information. It's very much high ground and it's difficult to push up as well. I actually think Tai Lu is now starting to send it up there. As we see 17 gaming, this is going to be on the north side of Leonis. They're actually not committing too much into it, and I like this position for 17. It's going to be very strong to hold, especially with that five story. Yeah, it's got a lot of ways to get out of Los Leonis, yep. which is not necessarily provided in some of the other areas. Uh, Mel is going to bump into Tanbu. He's going to get down and flushed. This is just the symptom of mid-game Los Leonis, right? There's a lot of people that are coming in with vehicles. Uh, you, have, you don't have necessarily the best idea on where everybody stopped. There's a lot of foot pushing that's also going to be going on over here. Just so many angles. Just like, look at this so many windows, so much altitude, so many different things to try to track. And that's not even counting things like dump trucks, trash cans, all that other stuff. It, right. it feels like there is just a threat everywhere. I see James will find one. I actually really like that they were able to, this duel was able to come together and consolidate because as we saw earlier, Corexi and James are nowhere near each other because of what happened with Genji splitting the team of phase. Oh. So the rest of T5 is coming in here. This is well done. This is T5 paying attention to the kill feed, realize the fact that they have the numbers advantage sure. inside this fight. Move Moving very aggressively. Jeems, though, wants to try to stop everything. He's got the shots in, but it's just a double up, and he's going to go down quite quickly. Phase down to just one member in a dream. And I like that Jeems did try. Oh, wait a second. Looks like, yeah, Corexi has been found. I think he was coming in to support. Oh. He'll find a shotgun from that range. He'll find two. Corexi oh. almost had all three and saved Phase. But I, as I was saying, I like that James was being a little more proactive and he didn't just sit up and wait for them to push. He tried to get an angle, but the timing was too late. And now look at Navi, looking to capitalize on some of these downs. A tenth of a second difference there for James' play would have been a massive yes. difference. Navi realizing the weakened squad's going to be in front of him, going to get rewarded with just spotting out a down. And we're like, oh, hey, thanks. We'll pick up that hard work. Nade also going to get picked up as well. But good read, T5. Going to walk right out, trying to go for that flush and instantly punished for it. Again, Alia has just been so huge for the team of Navi really stepping up. We talk about example, we talk about Uba, but Alia has just been so solid for them as he's able to save example here. And yeah, he's going to be able to stall this, and that is it. No, but they got, did they get the flush? Walks My into Example is one HP. One HP barely survives it. And I'm talking literal one HP. If that shot had come any later on the path bomb, that would have been an entirely different situation. Now capable of getting the reses out. Circle is going to pop, and it is going to keep in almost all of Los Leones. Yes, and looking at the teams that have benefited from this on the west side, outside of the city, will be Sonics as well as Twisted Minds holding quite a wide split there on the west as they're now starting to consolidate in one of those big warehouse buildings off on the other side of Leonis as Sonics will also start making that approach. Meanwhile, on the very south side, we see Question Mark making a rotation, and then even Cerberus actually bet very far in the south as they're going to be going probably back towards the east is where they came from. It's going to be a much better rotation. Awkward interaction about to brew up as Jinji is going to be bathing right up in front of Tai Lu, not to clean his sideline. So using that, trying to get up the hillside, but 755 now waiting for this last end of it. Going to get some shots, connects in quite a bit, tries to pull away from it, shifts away, and now Jinji He's got a couple of members on top of the hillside and a couple down below as Pio not even really around this one right now, trying to fend up. It's going to be question mark that might be pathing into his direction. He might find himself isolated, hops inside of a vehicle, and now he's got to cut a path in a very similar fashion. Yeah, and everyone is starting to send their way into Leonis. We see Falcons dead center, but on the east side, we have 
Forest on the north, we have 17 who actually, again, we talked about it earlier, they have such a strong position now in the circle because they don't really need to commit to Leonis, but if the circle does shift more inside, they have a great foothold to start making their way into the city. And that's a very complicated area that we're looking at, right? It is. It's, it's, it's very good to defend up for now. Uh, Twisted Mind's also going to bisect in, going to get right on the outskirts of Los Leonis as well, just more to the west of where we were talking about with 17 Gaming. Cerberus doing a wide wrap, uh, similar pathing, similar mindset. Four Angry Men, one of the few teams that's not committing into anything Los Leonis. They just want the north to themselves. Yeah, and they've been they've been actively pathing from north to west and then back from west to north. We also see Cerberus, as you said, that west side rotation. I thought maybe they would try to go more towards the east and wrap, but I actually like this a lot better. Yeah, uh, there is a... It's pretty open over here. We all know that one, but there are a couple of ways that they can do some stopovers in the north. It's a bit wider. The issue is that we're seeing them, and specifically Tai Lu, come into this with a lot less information than they would like. So they don't know what's available, which means that this rotation is going to be way slower. That's the downside for Cerberus, though, as Question Mark is going to be a bit more bold, get into their position, Twisted Minds doing the same thing. So with this, if we see Cerberus having to make a lot of stopovers, and if they decide to go into the zone, they could put themselves in a firing line that is very deadly. They could, but then if they also realize that Twisted is actually in a pretty wide split, not really able yeah. to cover each other as well, they could take over that position and then really start to dictate their pace from the west side. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen there between them and Twisted. We also have question marks starting to move in, although they're already in the circle in the south. They do have a couple positions to go in as we now look at, yeah, they have a lot to play. Nobody is really down here except for the duel of Twisted Mind Split and Perfectus and Lou up to their north. The circle goes southwest. It, we're just going to see QM feasting over here. Yes, we it, will. It, this is pretty much near on God Compound, but it's not going to go that way. It's going to keep about, what, a quarter of Los Leonis in, and we're going to move up way into the north, much more favorable for Four Angry Men, Twisted Minds, and Cerberus. Yeah, but Four Angry Men, as you stated, Matt, wanted to stay outside of Leonis. They want to stay on the north side, and they were rewarded for it. This actually, the circle is ending very similar to the one that Tig clutched in that game. I think it was the yeah, second game yeah. of Miramar, so we're seeing a lot of that same area here. A bit more to the west than we saw on that one, so that, that crazy hillside not going to be quite as competitive or factor in it. And now it's going to be about what goes on on Los Leonis. So you can see teams. Forrest getting some harassment in as it's going to be the Expendables having to deal with yet another urban fight in front of them. Falcons just going to use this, jump past them, see if maybe they can get a position inside of Los Leonis. Looks like they're going for that courtyard positional. Meanwhile, Forrest, uh, I don't think that they want too much more of this themselves. They're happy with getting their knock, slows down a squad, see if they can shift away. Yeah, and I think it does look like they're opting to just try to get out of the city and go more for a northeastern wrap, which is probably going to be their best option here as Falcons now find themselves on the edge, but they're still in an area of most of the where they have a lot of room to work with. Not too many teams around them, just Sonics to their west as Cerberus now realizing that they can take over quite a bit of this circle, especially from the position that we see Duck Mai and Tycon in. Uh, they've got to be careful. They're, the harassment with the Hisaki and MS playing up on top of that hillside gets the shots into Tai Liu, discourages them away. They are quite separated, but they did, all get, like you said, realize, hey, Everybody's Los Leonis right now. Let's try to exploit that. Um, I do also do want to pop out that uh, QM has shifted very far into the north. Gingy's going to be coming up right back behind them on a similar path. We often see a lot of foot pushes and firefighting happen in this area. And G, I don't know. It's Gen G. I would expect that to happen. Yep, Gen G still also have four members alive and they can be very dangerous, especially with the way that PO plays very split off and they cause these awkward situations as we saw earlier with FaZe. Mm -hmm. But He's I still, I, yeah, I still like Cerberus, though. I like what they're doing here. It is a very ambitious split here, a 1-1-2, one, one, essentially, on the west. But they just don't really have anyone to contest them. Forrest! Forrest now coming in, and Batulans will find the knock on the Scappy. They should be able to recover this. And I say that, though, Nade's very much a factor here. And there is such range that we got up here. This is so vertical. Going to land just a bit short. Forrest is going to be just kind of hunkered in. They want to get Scappy back up. We've been talking about it today. Do you make some big plays for the squad. I mean, Master Olympus, Scappy, all this squad is, again, just on a constant evolution on this stage, and I love watching. They are, but I worry now Lou is on the bottom side of this. The utility is starting to find its mark. Damage is going out the way of Forrest. There's pin just stuck prone behind that wall, Matt. 
And this is just nothing they can really find. Scappy has at least managed oh, nice. to crawl forward, so he's going to move into that lower ground position. Lou not going to have the best angle to work with. Perfectix going to continue in their harassment. The odd benefit in this is that Death Knight can't get too involved, given the fact that they're still running that separated position. Circle's going to pop right into this position. So Twisted Mind, do up center. Also, let's not forget about Sonic's positioning on that line of uh, houses, or buildings, whatever you want to call them, that are going to be going down to the south off that road. That is a very strong position it to play is, from. Especially because the, the uh, buildings that they're at are all basically two stories, some of them three, which are also on the top of the ridge. So they yeah. don't have to worry about coming up. In fact, all they have to do is really look at the teams that are below them, like Question Mark, like Gen G, like Tai Lu, and pretty much just harass them for the majority of this game. There is a lot of buildings inside this, but there's also a lot of very greedy players that are running very wide splits and <laughs> yeah. punishing angles combined. So as we watch this, Dana was going to have to make some foot pushes through this. Uh, Falcons is playing a bit more to the north, but they left Draft King behind. He's kind of keeping the tail eye on this. He knows exactly where this squad is. The rest of Falcons, though, playing much more brazenly into the thick of the circle. It feels like he's just more of a scout here. He's not going to be pulling this trigger unless he absolutely has to. The issue, though, he's going to be moving more into the north. He's going to spot out Navi as well. That's a mixed blessing, giving you the information so that way you can feed it over to the team. Meanwhile, Jinji, they've just got a more directed idea. You they're know, we going. like this area over here, so let's just go for it. Yeah, they're just going for it, and I don't blame them because if they're actually oh! able to take this position, they're in a much better spot considering where they came from, and they're actually not going to lose anyone in that. That is astounding. And remember, so many of the throwables just came out, and they were going after what was going on with Forrest Tyler, though you can see having a similar mindset. They've got just Shin up. Question mark's going to be in front of them. A lot of down players going to be looking, watching people call forward. Spots goes for the spray, and he is managing to make this all come together. Best of luck. Coming down, trying to get vengeance, gets the spray, and now has to commit into just a very, set of qui a very quick set of doctors. And that was a huge play play from Shen. Instead of going for the flush, he actually ran past all the down members, and he was able to surprise uh, one of the mm -hmm. members there, question mark, put a beautiful save there from Bestelok, as we see another fight now. Navi continuing to struggle here, with only example left alive. Everybody just pulling Ma Navi down into the muck of all of this. We got Dano a soul on the outside, watching what's going to be going on. It looks like example going to be able to move forward, get the res. It got a bit hairy with Tanvu, and that solo's positioning at the time. Four Angry Men also moving in from the north. Everything just getting more compressed, more violent, as yes, there are buildings, but all of them now defended. These teams pressed together in an uncomfortable fashion, I might add, as Hisaki gets knocked out. Genji continuing to defend from this position that they basically stole away. I still can't believe it worked for them, but kudos to them, and they're now holding it against multiple teams, one of those being Lou earlier, and now it's going to be Cerberus, as Hisaki will actually just get naded. There are some problems that can happen where Jin G's at. You can see the open top. They've got, they stole this from Twisted Minds by taking down one of their members. And so they can't go for too many peaks out. They also have a lot of open angles that they're having to continue with. So they are just got their backs up against the wall quite literally to try to survive. Crawling out looks like Look Pios. Is, is he just trying to pick up some more information? Circle's going to pop. Fortunately for Jin G and the, the catastrophe that's befalling them right now, they are pretty centered. So much damage just done there by Tig, almost getting multiple knocks there. just trying to desperately protect Pio so that he can get in and get the res. I think they were able to recover him, but yeah. that Sonic's position you were mentioning is just so strong. However, if this does shift to the north, their cross on, the, on that road is yeah. going to be difficult. This is a fatty road, too, to walk through with no cover, it's no thick. nothing else. And yes, Pio back up yet again, crawls through the gunfire. That's just his lifestyle right now. Four angry men, they're just trying to cut a path a bit more to the south. You can see they're trying to dodge out on some of these angles. Let's not forget about Cerberus right at the doorstep of what's going to be going on with Genji Twisted Mind. So just putting in so much work while Genji is alive. My concern is just look at how much damage they're taking. They are just yeah. coming into this one tattered. Navi making their foot push though. They're going to have to deal with shotguns at the doorway. Capitan just waiting. A little sawed off. But look, Sol as well with another angle almost gets the knock on the Capitan. Now two members of Navi still left to push in the circle on the east side. They're not in yet. So although Navi was able to reset. It's just down to Uba now. This is such a big problem for them to navigate through. Uba has no pathing. If he moves into the north, he's going to have to contend in with 17 gaming. Meanwhile, Dan was going to be playing the opposing side of that just to the south. And there you go. Jinji finally going to get taken out. It's going to be Forrest who's now moved forward. Remember, they were caught up. They were the first team that we saw Twisted Minds having to contend with. They go, no, we're going to start clearing this out even more. 
they find a nade master just taking care of Genji as Cerberus now has been bought more and more room to play with, more and more room to work with as 4EM now is trying to look at angles on the force who are stuck in that little compressed area, those little tankers. We talked about how it feels like there is an enemy at every single angle whenever you have to play into Los Leonis, and this almost feels like the epitome of that. You can see it is just everything complicated. Everything has an opponent behind it. We still have 32 members still alive, and this is so much of a tinier circle than it feels like. Uba just hitting the deck for now. He knows that there's an angle on him potentially from where Danawa is. He was getting shot by, I think it was Solar Salute earlier, and he needs to just crawl in. I'm not sure if he has a jammer pack. If he does, he can delay this a little bit more. He'd love to make it to the wall of that building and just stay safe, but he's just so low to survive just barely. And look at that nade coming in just at the feet of Soul from the team of Falcons. Being bold and just sticking to it is what kept him alive there. Those stairs eating some bullets, but also eating the nade. Uba. I don't think he's in yet. He's not. I mean, he still has to move just that bit further forward. 17 Gaming on the other side, and he knows it. Four Angry Men, though, now trying to navigate their way through. They're going to be kind of refereed out of this one by the fact that Twisted Mind's still holding on to a very high ground position. The good thing about 4EM, though, is because of the position that 17 is at, they actually have a lot of room to work with here and try to get rid of some of the teams just to their west. And that's going to be, obviously, <laughs> Wait, Cerberus. Uba just Forest. leapfrogged in front How of Falcons. He, How did he get here? Uh, he just bowled, ran right in front of 17 Gaming. Uh, He's going to see if maybe he can get some shots. They're going to walk right in front of him. He manages to get one. Can he at least get a flush out of it? He does. That stops the Falcons in their tracks. Denoa also providing some protective angles in this one. And Uba safe for now. But man, it does not feel that way. And look at the way that he's dancing around the angles. He can clearly see that it's actually going to be Denoa helping protect him. The nades, though, coming in. He has to dodge those so carefully as he's being held, as you said, by Dano with these angles. So smart from him. Look, they're the same color on the map, so they're, they've got to assist each other. That's the way it all comes around, right? Uh, Sonic's hearing this firefight. They're, they're now having to, to leave now. their compounds. They're going to be moving into the north. The circle does actually shift into this direction. Uba inside of it, but Falcons not so much. So they're realizing this. Uba trying to get some shots into what was defending him just a moment ago. Has got to be careful. Question mark. Sonic's. We're going to see Cerberus, four angry men, all having to make a move. And Capitan barely making it in that building. He might be able... In fact, he should be able to respond with the res there on Emmy. Is now Sonics have actually chosen to backfill Danua. Beautiful play. Just jumps up, finds the moment to pounce. They've got to continue their path. And we were talking about how much it's going to suck to cross that road. Well, guess what? That's what you got to do if you're coming in from the south on this one. Cerberus Esports is going to get eliminated as well as four angry men now starting to get a line and keeping an eye on what's going to be on with question mark. Sonics, though, are moving factors to the south. They're going to have to continue with Twisted Minds on one side, remnants of Falcons on the other. Twisted Minds has so much vision on this, especially with the elevation of being in that five-story. This is going to cause problems for Sonics. Even if they get across, they still aren't going to be necessarily safe as two members now, Falcons, and he was able to get Capitan up as well. So they're going to start to try to move in. They're at least in for now. 17, though, starting to encroach on their position. But more importantly, 4EM now is in a position where they will have to move just a little bit above where 17 is playing. If they can find a path into this, this could be a big Pull, game for them. Say. Shift them up the leaderboard in the way that they want to. Forest, though, at their side. These guys just won't roll in. Used to they, die, man. The, the fact that they're still alive in probably what is one of the hardest situations to survive. They've had Twisted Minds on top of them for, what, three circles now? Yeah, they've been getting circles. harassed as well, and they even got the knock on the Genji with that nade coming yep. out from Master. So, Forest are really resilient, man. I, I'm starting to love this team. A Scappy will go down for a second time, and almost a shirt flush here from Shaolu, right? You would think that nade coming yeah. in. Yes, it will do it. Okay, uh, starting to settle down a bit more. Sonics have kind of had to pump the brakes on their approaches. It is going to be Falcons that are trying to get, keep them out. New Circle definitely shifts north of that road. That hillside, Twisted Mind's going to have to deal with Bill first right down below him. And you can see, yes, they had smokes. Sonics, who've been holding down a lot of these different angles, have the utility. But the problem is they just don't have the cover. This is what we were worried about. Crossing is just so difficult. At least Tig will find Capitan. I'll get up. Maybe get a point before he goes down, but no. The trade will buy them a little bit of time as now Spiral will have to res Batulins. Just holding out on top of this one right now, clinging to life. Sonic's trying to do the same as you can see that they're having to move through a very desperate approach. Benefit, though, is finally everything is dead in front of them. The yeah. compound in front of them, if they can make it, is going to be safe. That jammer pack saving mine. A little bit of damage is starting to go up towards this building. There's basically a, a, a dump truck there. There's not much to play. And even if he gets on that, I'm not even sure he's safe. His Shrimzy will go down to Suju. And yeah, he's... 
He's just going to hunker down for the time being. It's pretty much the best play he has, especially with 17 right above him. Uh, Twisted Minds have just had so much influence in this game for they so, have. so long. Kills don't reflect it, but I promise you when we see the damage numbers, they are going to. Olympus tries to move so forward. He gets started body. out. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Just look almost 90, de what, uh, yeah, 90 degrees yeah. up from your yeah. angle and spot that? That's so hard. Can't really fault uh, Olympus for that. It's just one member left now of Force. It is going to be Master. Three kills to his name. And Phil first finds oh! two. Those are massive knocks. He might be able to even move up here if he's not seen by Master. What a play. What a spray. That was exactly what he needed. Mime, though, here's the pitter patter. Footsteps right next to him, realizing this is going to be a mass problem. 17 Gaming clinging to life over here. They are going to have four angry men that moved forward. Phil first is going to spot out the end of it. Picks up yet another kill. Firefight now starting to break out between 17 Gaming as well as four angry men is going to give Mime a bit more of a reprieve. So damage squads to the south, and we've got a straight up 4v4 in the north. Six kills the way of 4EM. Walking into this blue zone grenade, though, that's a Ooh. lot of damage for 4EM to recover from. A 17 with six kills of their own, holding the high ground position against 4EM. But they also have to be very aware that Twisted is still on this high ground five story. And they've got those, like, air ducts that are even giving yep. them something, that some type of cover to work around. You can knock it, but it's going to be Dalve up in the front. Just going to go ahead and start walking the path in. Tries to go for some plays out of it. Four angry men trying to weather the storm the best that they can. Nades now going to be rolling right in the thick of them. Take out another. Just one clinging to life. 17 Gaming are going to be in front of this. What are Twisted Minds going to do? They're just watching They're this. Farm. They're just farming every bit of kills that they can get out of it. They can see all of this. Look at the amount of damage that Spyro and Perfectus are able to get down. And with the smokes as well as the blue, they might even be able to jump off and parachute. Perfectus is finding so much in this circle. Why do you even need to jump off? You could just kill everybody from your perch atop. Just make everybody down below you's life absolutely miserable. Juju just trying to find a way out. He's just got this tree for cover, and it's that's it. One. Look at all of these blue zones jumping up on top of him. There's nowhere to go. He just feeds it over to the blue zone itself, and yes, Twisted Minds picks up the win. Despite all the damage they took, that five story, we talked about it. 17 actually had that position early in the game, but they gave it up and managed to back off. Twisted came in and absolutely farmed in the end, and they are slowly starting to build that lead as they were 